conversations outside. So, we have one more participant who hasn't yet expressed his opinion, but uh, Ivan, I would like to give you the floor because uh, Vadim was talking about uh, Europe and the, the different perception of uh, Pelis. I was talking about the, the difference in understanding culture into civilization. It's impossible to choose the perception that you can choose a civilization, it's a misleading. We should have mentioned this in the early 90s to Mr. Yeltsin and his company and the people on his, his side. So let us continue uh, the discussion following some order. So Ivan, you live in uh, Europe and at the same time you were born and raised in Russia. You can compare the two worlds, the European approach to this type of issue, hopefully you understand it. How is culture and the sphere of culture regulated in Europe? What is acceptable, what is unacceptable in culture and in, in the mass media? What can you share with us regarding the European experience? Thank you, Marine. Unfortunately, like people on this side, I will have to start with China because it all started in China. The uh, most ancient civilization, I would like to say a couple of words because unlike many of my colleagues, I do speak Chinese. Unfortunately, my colleagues do not know how the Chinese cultural life is uh, being built today. There's a very simple uh, anecdotal uh, example. One of the most uh, common communist words is uh, comrade, kunji. And, uh, in uh, young people's slang, it means it's a representative of the sexual minority. So it's uh, gone away from the lexicon and now it's been replaced by uh, Mr. even at the party forum. And uh, Mr. Diskin started talking about this, but unfortunately didn't continue. The principal issue is with any censure. Uh, and this could be any kind of government involvement to suppress those who do things that we do not like. I think that's what we were talking about. So, in this case, any type of censorship uh, will create uh, countercultures. This counterculture is very strong in uh, China. It's counter internet against the uh, close Chinese internet. It's the counterculture which is outside of China and continues to influence China, and China cannot have any influence over that counterculture because it's outside, it's a perimeter of control. And what you are talking about, my dear colleagues, is the culture. I may use too strong a comparison, but it's the culture of a concentration camp. We are creating a uh, fence, barbed wire fence, and we are protecting our culture from anything. And if a very weak virus gets inside this perimeter, it will be stronger than plague and would be more dangerous us, uh, than plague. And now, moving on to Europe, I'd like to say that the European example is, uh, of course, principally different from the Chinese example, because in Europe, for quite a long time, they haven't been producing countercultures in that way. It is not something that is uh, destructive. It is uh, fairly harmonious. And uh, if there is any demand for any phenomenon, be that commercial demand or non-commercial, if something is talented, it will find its way to the hearts and minds. It's not going to happen overnight, yes. And Mr. Diskin said it very astutely. It happens on the experts' level. And uh, the art is created for those who create art and not for those that consume it. And there's quite a world of difference between the two, and they're different in their creative capabilities. And when they fight with what they create, they are trying to fight what they create. In in Europe, the experts' community are the bearers of traditional values. 
really traditional values and not the ones that you have uh, thought up in the recent decades, something you are trying to impose on the Russian society. The traditional value is a unimpeded abortion, and uh, that is uh, a traditional value in Europe, and most people would support this as such. It's the right to an abortion. That's sociology. That's not uh, lies. And you can uh, keep your own opinion. I'm against abortions myself, but I'm talking about objectivity here. The Western community exists in the following way. They create art. It is created without any censorship. And then at the next step, as it gets commercialized, it either is in demand or will remain art for a uh, narrow circle of uh, people that can value it. And then maybe after a while it can become mainstream, but at this stage the society isn't ready for it. But you don't need to create censorship in order to restrict it or use laws. If there is a contradiction with the existing law, so if it is a threat to the uh, society's well-being, although this is a rare case, so that an art could uh, could be such a threat, could pose such a threat. And uh, <coughs> it's not by chance that our colleagues are, you know, leaning towards political discussions uh, after a while, because there is a difference be between a political culture and cultural policy. They keep talking about uh, the cultural revolution and not cultural policy, and that's why we had China coming up the uh, cultural sphere as something that has already established and it can evolve like it does in the West, or we can influence, or it can uh, end up inside this uh, fence line and become uh, really shattered and the creativity will be wiped off the map. Not the cultural revolution, the cultural counter-reformation. Well, you shouldn't uh, provide your colleagues with your own definitions of um, phenomena. And the very last phrase, the alternative between the evolutionary development, uh, as is the case of Eastern, Central, and Western, and Southern uh, Europe, is uh, at least as uh, quite significant as the difference between Russia and uh, the United States. The Hungarian perception of the right to art and culture is very different from the Swedish one, but nevertheless, uh, they don't have censorship in either of the two nations. Dear colleagues, I've been listening to your opinions, and I have a couple of uh, clarifying questions I would like to pose to you. With your permission, I would ask them now, and then we'll move on. Yuri, you have been talking about the fact that you need to protect uh, minors from undesirable influence. You talked about internet, the internet, and the space where content can uh, be shaping everyone. You don't have to be a professional to, to do that. Uh, not artists, uh, anyone can uh, film something and uh, upload it. So the question I have is this. Do you think that this phenomenon has another important side or facet? So we have a lot of uh, content, uh, bad content we need to protect people from. But on the other hand is why is this being created? Somebody is creating this, making these things. And uh, Boris, it's not uh, just about those videos uh, that you wanted to see at 14. It's videos depicting people beheading other people. That's what I'm talking about. And so from your opinion, what, what can be done so that we could, uh, uh, you know, reduce the possibility of this being produced? Somebody is creating this. And who is, are those people? What is your opinion about this? And many questions have been asked. Let me try to show you the profundity of this matter. 
and why uh, a foreigner site is a microbic uh, and minuscule part of our life. This is a huge site and part of it. But let's not go into these uh, spheres. I asked you a broader question. Well, what I mean is on the Internet you could find a lot of information that is uh, hateful, uh, that stereotypes people nationally, racially, that contains, uh, you know, peop urging people to commit uh, violent acts. A lot of information that is being placed there knowingly and knowing what the consequences of this will be. So my question to you is what can be done to uh, reduce the amount of this? You can make it Russian. It's one month of work and uh, it uh, costs you 10 million rubles. But in addition to pornography, there are a lot of things, yes. But to some extent, it seems to me that as a child, um, you get interested in, in the opposite sex. And uh, of course, uh, people probably at this age would be looking at nude pictures on the index back then you would postpone those things uh, from 8 to 12 and then uh, on and on. And they were selling those uh, pictures or uh, uh, postcards. I was uh, doing uh, heavy lifting, heavy weight lifting, and uh, I was go traveling to a championship, and we uh, we're looking at those pictures, and for some reason we were not successful with those things. But Yuri, you are telling us stories about uh, your own experience. But I would like to, it's a great story, but let me share an example. But still, we are talking about that people can find there. But I asked you a different question. If you're not ready to answer it, maybe you didn't like it or you didn't find it interesting, then I would sort of pass it on to somebody of our colleagues. Okay, let's start with uh, um, you, maybe, Vitali. I will give the floor to Iosif, colleagues. In order to uh, clarify my position, how policy is built, I would like to give you a, a story. Cromwell won the Civil War in uh, England. The first thing he did, he uh, disbanded the long parliament because they were uh, corrupt, they were bad, and he decided that uh, only moral, highly moral people could rule the country. Where could the, he get them? He hired military chaplains who had uh, definitely proven that they are ready to sacrifice their lives for faith. So he gathered the parliament, and what they did as the first order of priority in accordance with God's uh, with God's uh, will, let's uh, get rid of the interest on loans. And the, fourth, the next day, the money in the country disappeared. Nobody would lend you money if you don't get any interest. A few days later, the country was at the verge of the economic uh, really crisis. And then Cromwell brought in the Fusiliers, saying that these uh, chaplains are worse than those bastards. So this is a good illustration to the fact that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We need to have the professional understanding of the matter. We've all been through classes of physics. We know that air is uh, following one set of uh, laws. Physical. The same goes for water sphere, and plasma is... Uh, following other sets of laws, and those who do not understand those laws will pay dearly for this uh, ignorance, which is to say that these idiots are even worse than the other scoundrels and rascals. So this is about what we are trying to regulate. It's a matter of uh, <coughs> creativity. <coughs> it's the matter of uh, regulating authority. And uh, people are weak. You cannot count on them 
uh, that parents will provide them with good defense. Empirically, this is not proven. We're not going to be the first ones to uh, go down that path. I'm sure someone before us has been there. There's a great museum, the Archaeology Museum in uh, Naples, and that's the Pompeii excavation site. People from the entire world go there. You walk and walk and walk, and you see uh, really masterpieces of art. And then you see a wall with uh, rods this thick. And it says, further down, there are some exhibits that can uh, can be considered to be offensive. Well, if you don't have uh, parents, um, with you, then you cannot go there. But uh, what those uh, exhibits are are the uh, some items that were used by the Romans for their sexual needs. Well, you, if you you can enter it uh, if you want to, but the wall is there. And who decides whether to erect this wall or not? And this society is the answer to this question. It's the society, and it's consolidated moral. Ideas. We have a very healthy uh, society. It may be disoriented, and our commission understands this. Uh, I would like to later ask you a question about uh, the law, but as we are doing the been conducting the ethical discussion, general ethical discussion. I would like to, to hear a, an answer to the question that I asked of my colleague here, Ivan, but I, I would like to respond to this by responding to what has been said about regulation by the state. First of all, the subject of regulation is not just the state. The society should be one of such place. Uh, we should have uh, uh, development institutes uh, where we should have experts that are formulating the government's policies. The question is uh, that censorship is only applicable in very narrow fields, uh, banning things, prohibiting things. And that could include uh, ban on profanity, violence, pornography, for example. Censorship can be introduced in some fields that are really sensitive in that society, but there are other areas where censorship is not applicable, such as art. You could use experts' opinion, artistic uh, councils. And these are the bodies that should be populated with people that really know what art is, that are the practitioners of art, and they would know what the national policy of the nation should be. And we will still have to work on that policy here in this country for the next several years. And the national policy and the government policy are going to converge at some point, cultural and state policy. And people may ask you, where can we get these censors? I'm sure we have people like that. This Borsky Club, this Borsk Club uh, travels a lot. We talk to the intellectuals. And although this may not be applicable to the uh, elites, the artistic elite of Moscow, I would like to assure you that the intellectuals are quite conservatively minded. And they can be receptive to those messages that we're talking about right now. And now a few words about the internet. But I would still like to hear from you. What do you think about not the measures like prohibiting? I'm talking about the other side. Measures of education. That's exactly what I was going to talk about. The very last trip we took, and that's the one I've alluded to, was to the cities of Alexandrov and uh, Pereslavl in the Vladimir in the Yaroslavl region. And we visited the Saint Alexei uh, Hermitage. It's a, an amazing place. I would recommend you to visit this place. This is not just a monastery. First of all, uh, they have a, a Lyceum, they have a cadet school and a ecclesiastic school. That's all part of one community, of one compound. They all are people that would then, after graduating from the Lyceum, go on to receive their higher education. They would receive a, a higher education that would be, I would call it a hybrid between the Soviet education 
and the Imperial Russia's education. They have 30 museums of uh, high standard. They have a huge library, about 500,000 volumes, the largest private library in Russia. I'm a doctor of sciences, but when I visited the reading room, I wanted to uh, seek asylum there, because really this is where the real treasure of spirit was uh, dwelling. So Father Peter told us about how they teach and educate the uh, students and school children. They don't have the internet there. They don't, ha don't have it at all. They uh, do proceed after that uh, when they go to uh, to go to the uh, they still successfully enroll in the universities. Yeah, they don't have the internet. They are not cut off from the, the internet. According to their rules, the internet uh, is not something they are entitled to. They do study it, though, and I can say that a well-educated person with a good secondary education is capable of uh, learning how to use a computer within several months and uh, to learn how to use the internet uh, within a one month. But a person with a good education can outstrip in terms of speed of uh, uh, grasping the internet because we are living in the mythology that the information society requires enlightenment at all times because the secondary education that we lost in the 1990s something that we cannot restore it is something that gives us much more it is capable of not necessarily replacing the internet but prepare it uh, and prepare us for interacting with it and I think Boris wants to respond to this but we shouldn't really um, juxtapose internet and education. This is quite uh, uh, doubtful. I was really surprised. I uh, graduated from the Physics and Technology University, and I was the head of a chair there for 20 years. It was a great idea for me. It's interesting that, is that a person that uh, had been praying to God and didn't study the internet and physics and could still enter the physics and technology. He wasn't talking about that. I would like to be uh, straight in, in your statement. Okay, I uh, respect everything. They have uh, a cadet school there as well, yes. And what is the, uh, what is father's uh, military rank? Does he have a rank? No, he's a, he's a an art uh, scholar. They have still a cadet school. They have their own director. Why would Father Peter need to have wear epaulets? The cadet schools near monasteries is something that I'm really puzzled about. It's a religious secret. That's not what we are going to discuss. Boris, I asked you a, a different question. We are not having discussions with people from the auditorium, from the audience. Please answer my question concerning the various channels of information from your standpoint, is it really true that an individual can be educated in such a way that even all channels of information, if they are open, would still not be detrimental to them? I know such a person, uh, that's me. There are people that uh, we still need to restrict certain things. And you believe that a person can make his own choices. Most of my life was spent in the Soviet Union, and I remember clearly that the school and the Young Communist League organization were urging me to do certain things. I was very disciplined. I believed really in what they told me, but at some point, you need to grow up, you know, become more mature. We're all uh, adults. We all have our own uh, system of ideals and uh, values, and we're entitled to them. And every individual can decide for himself what they need. For 30 years, I haven't had any need for an authority to which I would come and would say, Father, I'm uh, really foolish, and I have dark thoughts, and I'm afraid of making a mistake. Give me a piece of advice. Should I read this book or not? You know? 
I think most adult people can figure things out on their own. But if, and in fact, such a need may entirely be plausible. I'm sure that there are people that need to get advice from, from priests. But my request is, I asked you a question about the channels of information. Uh, gentlemen, we are moving things full sideways. Uh, what does it have to do with cultural policy? But let's uh, take turns and uh, uh, let's uh, stick to the agenda because we have been digressing. I have a request for those who plan certain things for the benefit of uh, the greater good. Do not limit my right to uh, information. Do not do this. You can uh, limit uh, such access to your or for your own children, and uh, as Iosif uh, Diskin has very astutely said. But I can tell you more. If uh, Mr. Wasserman has such a desire for limitation, restrict uh, such uh, access, but do not touch me. I would like to say this. One of the key phrases in the previous speaker's uh, notes, Mr. Nadezhin's note, was that everyone has his own uh, system of values. Until we have this um, diversity of uh, systems of values, until we have one single set of values, uh, that we would still be in disarray. If we don't have the government-based ideology, we would still be having um, those things happening. Speaking about censorship, of course, nobody's talking about uh, comprehensive overall censorship. I'm talking about certain limitations uh, in the internet because it's the network that was not uh, conceived as a territory of freedom, but rather it was a, an ability, or rather it was an instrument to uh, manage large masses of people through creating mm, content. There was a book published in 2004 uh, that talks about that. So I'm talking about the real censorship, where it is real, and in what type, what shape it can come to us, and where it wouldn't be limiting the ability of uh, artists, even if it's an artist that wants to nail his scrotum to the uh, floor in his apartment. But if he does that on the Red Square, we can uh, sue him for indecent exposure. No one can limit the artist's right to paint any types of pictures, be that anti-Orthodox or anti-Russian. And in the Sakharov Center, they had this attention religion exhibition. In that case, we have the right to demand that the organizers are criminally persecuted because they are inciting a religious strife, because this leads to violence. This is uh, the gist of our approach to censorship. If there are certain things uh, that will arise, we will be talking about them then. We will only be uh, banning certain deployment or display of uh, art if that art uh, contradicts a certain set of values, uh, spiritual values, we used to have uh, the commandments, uh, the communists had their own moral code, ethical code, uh, whether you like it or not, although it f mimicked or mirrored the Ten Commandments. But you can say that a particular individual, or you could rather say that such an individual was uh, not following them, but today it's difficult. Uh, to do that if it is a corrupt uh, bureaucrat, because he would say to you, this is my value. No. I'm sure it can do it, because that's actually for the sake of our joint business. Censorship is uh, not something what is really threatening you. We're talking about not about censorship, we're talking about the system of limitations, and we shouldn't consider this system of self-limitation, because this is ideotic, an ideotic idea. You know, I'd like to give the floor to Alexander because he probably looks here as the one who actually for all the freedoms said that's not right. I'm keep saying all the time. Let's listen what we just said, the freedom of creation. But when the product of this creation is publicly used, 
we should also think about the public values. I want to also pay attention to the fact that you were involved in with the draft law on these cultural values. We need to think first who who actually assess the public consequences. What are the general criteria? Theories? Because the society is a very badly empirically measurable item. You all, you are three people, and you all have three different opinions. And the approach to have one single moral opinion existed. We tried it in Russia, so we need to go to the real fundamentals of, of the mental thinking mentality. So we, what do we do? We usually point out it. We have a project which is called the All Russian Unification. That's one story. And there is another thing what is I do really care about. Because now we have also some problematic groups in the public stage with the very problematic values. We also see the case when a certain exhibition is destroyed or a certain performance can be interrupted. Why did I give you an example with a room? What, what we should do when we would like to separate the countries in the war, they should be in different corners. There should be cultural spaces where the people's values cannot be touched. I think it is not really good when you burn chicken on internal fire. It is something what can really abuse the moral feelings of many people here. It is not really good if you talk about because we talk about the uh, various uh, requiem and these we listen part D, D0. And one of these spectators has a mobile phone with the song playing loud because people, if you know what uh, the day zero is and they have to listen to the ringtone of a cell phone at the same time in the theater. So I really wanted to kill this guy sitting somewhere next to the stage. Because the theater used to be the temple of culture because uh, you all studied the history of the ancient Rome and Greece. They had also shelters which were not with the string, strict rules where you were able to feel protected and nobody was allowed to touch your values. And we also need to warn at the entrance to the bullshit theater that this particular performance is a non-traditional version of a very traditional piece. If you don't like what the bullshit theater does, you can also make a demonstration. You can also say very loudly that your values are breached here, but those who made it chose it came inside nobody is allowed actually to worry these guys because Joseph do I understand you correct that is the Conde draft law on protecting the very important values because our society is has a very complicated structure we have also basic Values and when the patriarch said that the Russia is ready for a national idea, and we, as a sociologist, say we see the basics of this idea because the belief and equality and freedom are the values for everybody. And some people may like Rembrandt, and I prefer Hulse. 
I don't really like what is the modern art. And there are a lot of these people, and I don't want to give to put myself as an example because some people really needed to be emotionally impacted. And we have this kind of theater. So we really want actually to avoid the civil cultural war. I would like to give the floor to even the proposal we just heard from uh, Joseph about this separation of a space in the where the people actually weren't worry each other. How do you think? Is it already implemented in Europe? Because Europe has also people with very different cultural ideas and there are no real prohibits and limitations in Europe. Do you, does the Europe achieve the situation when people can listen to Verdi in theater and the other people can go to another temple and do things which actually are disliked by other people? Can they, do they manage to keep the balance or not to keep the balance? Yes, they do manage to keep the balance in most of the cases. Not everywhere it is possible to do in a full context. However, there is a contextual serious mistake in many of our speeches. We st it started with the monastery because we shouldn't actually are two different things. The art and the creation of R and these are two different functions, two different people. We also talk here about the cult art keepers. The art keepers are those who keep the art already created. They can probably give us additional knowledge about the art. Actually, they don't create. We know it. These are absolutely different th people. These are absolutely different spaces. We also are told that there are dangerous channels like internet. The channels and the modern art are also a part of a artistic process. If the people don't know about it, but what do they know about the modern art? And we shouldn't close it because the people should be able to make a free choice and a attempt to create an all nation monastery where the black monarchs will explain to the white monarchs how to make the service. Let's go. I would like to go back to the context. I think it's uh, I, I didn't really interrupt you. Certain. If we actually close the internet, we close the access to the international fine art, because most of the Russian peoples have no access to go to the Tate Gallery in London, and they won't have an opportunity to go to London. And the internet gives them an opportunity to assess this art and to create their own opinion and not something what we let them to think about because the tools should remain tools and the European cultural environment gives you this opportunity you can use different tools to achieve different goals the modern Vienna is a European capital where dozens of thousands of people attend something what you consider as a conventional art. There's a ballet, opera, and the classic music concerts. We're not talking about the modern art. And the modern art exists in parallel. Sometimes it may also cross with the over with the this conventional art. If because the European artistic education gives you a, ch a chance to 
for self-identification because the European artistic space and environment is can be in one place but at different levels. You can actually consume um, the art of you prefer, but you shouldn't actually limit those who create the art because otherwise one group of the population can be deprived of what it needs. Dear colleagues, we are at the ring close to the end of our discussion, and now I'd like to talk about the creation of something what can uh, can bring us to something positive. And now I'd like to give the floor to the Yuri because he's actually a movie producer. Can you also say that the movies can become a such source of something good and internal? One could be the movie not be not only entertainment but also a kind of educational thing. Also, I'd like to tell you more general things. We're here at the Economic Forum and how the culture and economy are interrelated. This is one thing. Where the economy is created, who is the consumer? These are the families. Our, because our big country is a set of families. Let's have a look at the Russian families. Whether it is really good in Russia, where the families know it is not really good because our families are really sick. That's why within the culture, the government should have a policy, and the policy should be aimed at keeping the families. It was in the Soviet Union, China, and all good countries, and all these countries should have this kind of policy, and we need to finance movies, we talk about the governmental financing. When I was taking the money in the fund of cinema, and the question was the one, ROI, and the question was about only ROI, and nobody asked me whether I was aiming to bring a certain use for the country. So we're missing the most important thing in Russia in spending the governmental money. We don't have any policy in creating family values. And I wouldn't say let's introduce the censorship and the prohibit the divorces. Or we can also, oh, let's, we're orthodox and we don't need any abortions anymore. But why a number of Abortion, we are ahead of the planet. Why we're actually number one in terms of divorces? Why? Because that's good. I just, because everything is allowed in internet and the children, and they don't have any respect towards women, towards the mother or a girl, if you talk about this, the sex industry is something what is a real illness for the society. Smoking, do we have any censorship for the smoking? Yes, we have it. And the society became more, even stronger because now it is not allowed to smoke in restaurants. I used to fly in the past and the people were smoking sitting next to me. Now it is not allowed. As for the gambling clubs we actually don't we have this uh, underground casinos why it is bad as good we also because you do you make movies can you also give examples about the positive um, positive impact from the cinema I spent a lot of money for my cartoon and I'm happy that I did this cartoon and, uh, and it was actually stolen Actually, I self-expressed in this cartoon, and if I had also more money from the government, it would be even easier to create the second cartoon. I mean, I'm doing now the second cartoon. So you are doing, you are making your cartoons without any governmental support. I received seven percent of financing needed, and I really made a good cartoon. We. We, should, we need to have the policy. 
and there, are th there should be three Yuri Rizanos, and they should uh, create good cartoons. Otherwise, we can also create only Tom and Jay. Tom and Jay is something but can uh, really create you the quick uh, repay, but uh, the nation will become weaker. You know, you know what Tom and Jay was about. You actually started talking about the governmental financing for the culture. You know, like the, the one, and I see Vitaly willing to say something to for this topic. Vitaly, please tell us when the government gives some money for creating pieces of art or fine art. What should we do? We are also very close to the end. But what should we do? How the positive cultural policy can look like? How to avoid the extremism here? What should we really do here? Because we articulated our ideas really long ago in the Russian doctrine of 2005, and Vladimir Von was one of the co-authors of this doctrine. I'm not able to uh, tell you everything out of this doctrine, but the main idea was let's think what is happening with the culture in our country. Despite all the efforts from the minister, and I really appreciate the minister, it happened. So we do see here the consolidation, optimization of budgets in Russian villages actually are not able to earn the full salary because and they work only two hours a day because the government is not able to pay them more than for two hours a day. So we don't know, I'm not talking about the strategies and well they target federal programs. That's a very tricky question. All the questions we heard today, the answer can be when we know the value of the cultural policy and what kind of people we'd like to educate. If we don't know it, all our questions and issues are here in the air and we will keep discussing very long. And everybody will keep his own truth. And I think that's a nightmare which actually we, the cultural situation we got in 1990s, that's the eclectics, the glamour, that's uh, the, this is a situation where the, the people, uh, people actually started digitalized, people started juggalized, when the, a lot of catastrophes and the kill it in a death count which was shown to the people but we don't really talk about the culture what kind of culture we need because the level of mal mass culture in terms of conservative and traditional values it is actually in, not a lot in terms of content and shape because we were taught that nasty programs and culture is can create more higher rank ratings it can be seen by more and more people but if uh, we actually go to the commercial base for, for the commercial companies who are making the advertising on TV they can pay more money for those cases which you can show more often. And the answer, what we can change, could change and where we could go is as follows. I already said the cultural counterformation. I wouldn't actually compare it with China. That's actually the cultural counterreformation. That's the similarity with the Europe, which tried to stop and the process of spiritual can degradation and they succeeded in it and the Russia has a chance to do it. So if you talk about the art, the fine art, if we have this governmental will, we can set a task to create a new big style which can be 
shown in the support of the feeling of national dignity with all possible resources because we have historical as our in mind resources and everything what is needed. So the government should build uh, with the culture, the image of the future. And I can also tell you very detailed what the big style is in the Russian doctrine. It is already written. You can also use these sources. And I can only say if we send the question in this way, we can probably find the criteria. And if we keep the current status quo and everything not so bad, we just need to make the legislation a little bit more efficient and actually we won't go away from this nightmare in terms of culture Russia is a very seriously sick I would like to I should interrupt you know to give the floor to other colleagues Joseph do you agree that government is able through financing cultural programs to increase the cultural level of our people first of all I would like to contradict against a big disrespect towards the whole our nations because because the starting point of our cultural policy is actually something what the people with power think let's listen to the people when we talk about the art the mass culture and so on I would like to remind you that the Soviet mass culture was the very powerful tool for the patriotic and moral education and the mass culture is something what we accept every single day and this is the very reliable way how to create values there is no other way the Beatles that was a mass culture which created a certain European culture first let's build an understanding cultural policy which can really understand how it works because the main problem in our country is the act are the experts because the Western experts have unique knowledge or unique qualification and in our country the expert is the one is everyone who has his own opinion if you would like to do the cultural policy let's get in and understand how it works you can at least buy the handbook of cultural science and understand how the cultural channels are functioning when we talk about the support for the culture we talk about the search for new shapes about the tests and so on here we need professionals who really understand the trends also the modern art and we can give grants to them but we need to require them to give a good answer. If we got a very bad piece of art, we won't give it to you anymore. And this is how it worked in many countries. So you can, if you don't like Europe, you can also look at India. Second, the problem, well, what kind of values we use as the fundamental one, ones, I think it is really senseless to change the real perceptions existing in different groups. Certainly, we need to have an artistic education in school. I didn't really understand. Second. Second. Probably I missed something, but I also built this public council at the Ministry of Culture. The probably I made a mistake. This should be people with a 
at least cultural background, these people shouldn't be aiming at implementing their own values in the cultural policy. And there is something what Mr. Stasov said is about the music. We don't try the music, we take the music from the people. We can only make it better and give it back to the people because the cultural policy is very professional but very fine dialogue with the people. And if we actually, we shouldn't ignore the Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell's lesson I really wanted to remind you, but probably I wasn't really heard here. Thank you, Joseph. And now, Vladimir, your position is that the government can build a certain cultural level in the society, and I really feel you to contradict. I can tell you one thing. When I was working in a TV, and I w was at an assignment in this council of federation, probably Mikhail Lesson, the Minister of Information, was holding a speech. We asked him about this bullshit in the Russian TV at that time for very primitive guys, and he said that was the price of freedom of, of information because in the past the TV was fina financed by the government, and now we actually give something what we are paid for, what the companies pay for. Uh, now we actually provide this stuff which is actually required by uh, the most primitive people. That was the price for freedom. As for and now I would like to tell you what is what we need to do in this case without state ideology, without a written system of values which should be accepted by everyone. Because every single economic strategy has a sense when it is aimed at a certain target. Targets should be built on values and we have been developing in this country without any targets and values. So every single liberal guy has its own system of values. We, can also, we don't really need to talk about the religious now. Because, no. You really underestimate your people, but the people who really build their own cultural values. In this way, were built by Mr. Lesson and the other guys who actually used to peer the girls in the bath to the hole in the door, and now they uh, talk, tell us what kind of moral values we should appreciate in this society and what is the result, because the current society is even worse in terms of moral compassion to the Soviet one. Because now we do see the artificial primitive privatization of the society, especially in the Ukraine, which is now more a fascist country. And I don't really want to have the same brains and the Ukrainians have. That's an actually a pure lie towards the Russian society. Let me respond. Uh, there is a very well-known indicator of the health of the society known for more than 100 years, the number of suicides. We used to be record holders in the middle 90s. Now we've shrunk that by a factor of three. And all sociologists say that this is a good indicator of the uh, better health of the society. We've probably reduced our corruption levels fivefold. I would like to ask you the same question. I want this discussion to go to the positive streak. I will be very positive. You mentioned in your first statement that people ought to be free to uh, choose how they want to realize themselves, how they want to express themselves, but you've uh, touched upon a very interesting subject of the cultural policy of the state. What's interesting here is that if the government does not impose certain values, 
those values will emerge on, on their own. That's a very speculative statement. How can they emerge on their own? Because there's still influence on them from the family, from the schools. Where would those um, cultural examples be coming from for the society to move away from degradation? We understand the, what those decadent and uh, degrading programs and products our colleagues were talking about. How can we move away from such terrible examples and where, um, where is the crux of this uh, influence on the society? I'll try to be very uh, brief and very positive. I'm absolutely confident and convinced that a well-fed, well-educated and a calm individual uh, is seeking culture. Uh, if there is no war outside, he is calm, he is serene. He will be going to concerts and would be educating his uh, people like Humbert Humbert, Nabokov's Humbert Humbert. Dear colleagues, we have one last round. Vitaly, please do not interrupt Boris. He hasn't finished yet. Thank you, dear colleagues. Another important point is there is nothing that would indicate that our country is in a pit, is um, degraded. A hundred years ago, half of our country couldn't read. Thirty years ago, and I remember that time quite well, most people in the village and in small cities would spend their free time by drinking, having a fight, or go to the uh, movie theater. Now the situation is different. Today's young people are geared towards uh, positive experiences. Gyms are full with young people. Movie theaters and theaters are filled with them. As the next physics teacher, they are drinking five times less now than I did drink 30 years ago. There is no degradation. This degradation exists in your really sick minds. Now, regarding abortions, we're well, going to give you the floor, that those of you who are seeking in the audience. There is statistics that we can look at. The number of abortions. Now, what can be done? What needs to be done? It's a good question. I can assure you that the government can uh, certainly contribute to improving the culture in the nation. They can uh, really solve their own uh, problems in, in the cult cultural area by lifting up the living standards. If the individual is uh, well-fed um, and uh, he is uh, well-dressed. He will be gravitating towards art and creative uh, subjects. So that's something that will impact development. And what uh, the Soviet government did and what the Russian government did, so we have everyone having secondary education. We've all read Tolstoy and Dostoevsky and have listened to Bach, Rachmaninoff, and uh, Shostakovich. And, uh, we don't need to do anything more than that. We shouldn't direct people what to do. Teach them to read, to write, and give them something to choose from. So, but what can the government do in order to raise the cultural level of the society? And now I think it's your turn now. I would like to join Boris and support him that for the first, as the first order of priority, the government should fulfill its uh, primary duties, which it uh, sometimes fails to do. And if there is no good education, there can be no cultural policy we could speak about at all. If the education is fairly good, then we would be talking about different things with individuals that have such education. Of course, the government will pursue a cultural policy, even if it claims it doesn't pursue a cultural. That's still a cultural policy, without a doubt. The Russian state have always pursued a cultural policy. Let us not pretend that they did not do so 
in the 1990s, which was quite different from what you are talking about. The mass culture emerged on its own. That was the counterculture that emerged in the late Soviet Union as a protest against the Soviet uh, cloistered Soviet culture. This is uh, what uh, uh, China is now gravitating towards. And uh, in the society that is healthy, and uh, our society may not be entirely healthy in every aspect, it has its own problems, but every field of activity should be dealt with by the experts, demographers and gynecologists should be talking about abortions and not members of the Council on Culture. And crime should be dealt with by the law enforcement, not by us and not by the culture experts. We are experts in our own fields. We can give advice in these pertinent areas. But as soon as we try to expand this activity, then we will see that chaos ensues. That's at the best. But the worst case scenario would be where one part of the society will censor another part of the society, would really repress the others. And you are saying that uh, those that agree with you were repressed in the 1990s. But what you are trying to do now, you are trying to do perform a cultural revolution, but with the opposite direction. If the balance is not achieved, the society will be in the state of uh, contrition, and there will be no cultural policy to speak of in the society. OK. Regarding our further plan, uh, considering that we, uh, we had to move uh, from that area where we were at the risk of uh, roof falling down on us, we've we're past our time limit. Let's go through the last round. Let's take maybe one minute each, not five minutes like previously. And maybe that would be one minute dedicated to you giving one important piece of advice aiming to improve the uh, key things in the cultural policy of the nation, something we can do to improve our culture policy. And then I would summarize the results of this discussion. Let's start with you going clockwise. Let's start with you, and then we'll probably go in a staggered fashion. What I will begin with was something I already stated. There is Article 241 in the Criminal Code. It doesn't work on the Internet. It exists. The society has done this. They've made this step. Why doesn't it work? That's why. Well, 100,000 people come to the Internet. And that's children. And they spend 30 minutes, one hour a day. And that's what leads to the degradation of the society. We need to make this article of the criminal code to work, of the penal code to work. The family w cannot be a real instrument here. A priest told me once that he had to evict from the Sunday school the individual for looking at porno pictures. That's very important. Now, Yosef, may I? And you will say. Boris is asking, I will surrender my right to speak to him. Unlike the priest as a father, I can uh, really give him some good whipping, my son, I mean. The priest shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't be using uh, uh, whipping the purpose. So what should be the right way to approach? I couldn't hear you well. Or pull the cords. Well, I think. What's important to note is that the government should provide people with uh, security, good living standards, and uh, a good level of education, a standard set. And then people will be uh, pulling towards art and culture. And secondly, certain things should exist at the government's expense, things like theaters, uh, philharmonics, music schools, and that's why you would be teaching classical music and so on. 
there's a great number of uh, requests to to hear uh, classical music or Bach, for example. That's in the millions. But a rapper uh, hits would be in the billions. And uh, uh, I'm saying that the government shouldn't be supporting other things. I mean, gay clubs can exist, but not at the government's expense. I would agree with that. Any uh, manifestations of uniqueness are possible, but only on a narrow strip uh, where people that support certain uniqueness, but not everywhere. If it's a gay club, gay propaganda is fine, because you are doing this amongst your own, but if they come to the schools, they need to be persecuted and and prosecuted. And the same thing should apply to art, because you know, people call art many things that cannot be called art. That's uh, what uh, the government's policy should be in the area of culture. As for uh, determining on one's own uh, about what's good and what's bad, this cannot even happen on the football pitch. This can even result uh, in a fight or uh, the complete stoppage of the game. We do not want our society to stop because of this anarchy. There are certain rules that should be common for everyone. If you are outside the bounds, then you would be rest restricted and corrected. And if uh, you behave, then the government should support you. You can do whatever you want, but at your own place. Ivan, please. If you can sum up briefly, briefly, and finally, I will do what I have been expected. Marina, a very quick example. The large French program after Emmanuel Macron's coming to power, the program for the development of uh, Francophony. How is this program made? I think this is a great uh, example. In every sphere related to the French language and the French culture, they will find experts. I'm talking about things like contemporary art, French language. The uh, program is uh, headed by the uh, French-speaking um, Arab national, but she's been the citizen for many generations, and it applies to everyone who speaks French. And uh, unlike our colleagues, nobody wants to exclude people sit uh, that are citizens of their own, no sh their own nation from that program. And uh, uh, these programs are developing programs. Uh, they are developing level of culture by every individual for various levels, and you would watch and uh, do things that are up to your level. And uh, if you can do this through contemporary art, through rap, or through high French opera, you would do this through those means and media. And altogether, this provides a very good, a very strong cumulative effect, and it has over the last year. That's a very serious cultural program which was developed in every field by dedicated experts. Nobody wanted or tried to uh, impose that over the opinion. Jazz men didn't teach opera singers. Vitaly, your summary, please. If we look uh, to the West, we should say that there are things like cultural policies and there are subject of such cultural policies. They are diverse. But if uh, we look at things in a more comprehensive way, when we talk about uh, contempt art or exclusive forms of art, this is the art for the minority of uh, viewers, uh, consumers. Broader art is uh, geared towards uh, broader audiences. Hollywood is one example of that, or Disney. They may be government-funded or not government-funded, it all happens differently. But in Russia, we are talking about uh, very strong involvement of the government, 70 to 90 percent involvement of the government in cultural policies. But does the government have the will to pursue a value-based cultural policy? So far, that will has not been strong enough. It's not really that evident. It's there, but it's not seen. And I should say <coughs> that artists have the right to an experiment, but the government has the right to its own cultural policy if it's uh, come to the realization of its need. And we have to 
uh, really draw a line between not restricting anything, but still leaving the artist that doesn't meet uh, certain requirements in that artist's own subcultural world. And, and I'm nearly done. I just want to s stress that now we're talking about a consensus of the moral majority of the people of the society. And the uh, liberals are associated with the Democrats, but now the conservatives are associated with democracy because we are uh, saying the apology for the uh, majority. And finally, Yosef, this uh, conversation is uh, very topical because the president has suggested that we need to develop a new law on culture. All of this uh, is quite uh, timely. Well, first of all, we need to emphasize the importance of professionalism because the life of art is something the government should be taking care of, and they should also take care of uh, uh, making sure there is diversity, that there is experimentation, so that the art can develop dynamically. Secondly, well, the other thing that the government should respond should be responsible for is the cultural enlightenment and education. When Boris says that people can make their choices on their own. That doesn't happen even in the consumer market, but here it is very crucial because that's where you would see those traditional values emerge, perceptions of traditional nature. That's where the culture is rooted. And uh, do we need restrictions? Yes, we do. There are cultural products that are circulating in the public space that are offensive to the uh, considerable and material values of the large part of the society. Since uh, Emilio Games time, we have known this. You cannot rely only on the rational uh, conscience. Even Connie, the great Russian lawyer, said that you cannot provoke uh, really doubtful and dubious uh, moral feelings. People are really not that um, comprehensible and uh, not that rational. They can get themselves into a trap of dubious notions. But in order to achieve this goal, this requires a truly professional effort. And you need to understand why you're doing this. Culture is an institution that makes the society what it is, the society. The sociologists deal with issues of socialization and integration, and that lives on. But we need to understand at the same time that culture does not live without crisis. And at Ernani, uh, the premier of Ernani by Hugo, uh, was where they had a fight. Uh, Madame Bovary's publication uh, resulted in lawsuits. We need to understand this. We need to realize that we need to have professional, a professional and understanding cultural policy that would be shaped by professionals, not art scholars, but people who understand the entire system of mechanisms that support the functioning of the culture. Dear colleagues, I was uh, performing the function of a regulator that would interrupt everyone, uh, not letting people speak for as long as they uh, wanted to, uh, would, uh, you know, remove that hat and would say that most of our colleagues are gathering at discussions where everyone is more or less likely minded. And they are discussing their more or less common opinion, but here we knew in advance that we would disagree with each other on a number of very important issues. And yet we found the time and the effort to sit together and have a civilized discussion um, of the matters where we do not agree on. At least we didn't have a fight on the stage, although we had a chance that the roof would fall on us. And it didn't, I would like to remind you. And uh, on a more serious note, let me uh, have a more serious closure for this discussion. You know, 
Of course, we would all want to live in a society where restrictions would not be needed, where there would be no elements of public life or social life that would be pulling people down. But we understand this is something that is unreachable. It's an ideal. And we live in a society where none of those things are in existence. But we should strive to make sure that our society becomes such where we need less of the restrictions but need more of proactive actions and more of proactivity. Because if we want to achieve something positive, we would need to work towards those things through uh, enhancing education, for enhancing access to culture. And we have been discussing uh, how can people assess various uh, works of art. Uh, I'm uh, sorry to say, but many people don't have any opportunity to go to any museum or watch any movie. And uh, they don't have the choice between the very intellectual and not so intellectual. So what we need is to uplift uh, the average level of culture and make sure that the government could spend its funding on culture and maybe this is where we would probably all agree but uh, as for the rest well I'd say that's why forum like this exist so that we could have discussions and disagreements uh, and I would like to say we are the first ones the debate format had never been tried at the Moscow Economic Forum and those that are going to come in our footsteps, they would be doing after us. So today, we blazed the trail. We showed everyone an example of how we should and shouldn't, depending on uh, what our audience may think. I would like to thank you all for your participation, for your willingness to participate, knowing that it's not going to be easy. And I'm really happy that we were able to meet here. and. I hope you're not going to be offended that I had to stop you and limit you. But that's your role. We are all in for that. OK, well, once again, thank you all. Thank you, the audience. I think we are past the time. And it looks like that in five minutes, uh, the break is going to be over. And the next portion of the forum would uh, start. Thank you very much. Yeah,